Hi, greetings and welcome. Clyde Branson here again for my latest vlog. Uh, this particular vlog will be concentrating on a, um, a dart. I call them canal darts, but you can use them on any still water, even on um, running water, as long as it's uh, not going too fast, of course. Uh, now, the dart waggler, uh, basically, it's a float that was developed many years ago on the canals by the northern lads. Um, it's weighted almost like a dart, um, I, and I'll show you exactly how uh, how it's constructed as we uh, as we go a little bit further on through the stages of making the float. Now, I want to go back and tell you a little bit about this because um, the first time I ever used this was on the Oxford Canal, um, and I was catching um, a few little uh, fish on the far bank under a bush. Now the problem was it was a bit too far on the on the fourteen meter pole, so um, I thought right what I'll do I had some of these floats in my box and I thought right I know what I'll do I set one up on a on a wagon on a, on a rod line and I managed to get across right under the bush and um, thankfully it, it caught me a few chub and I uh, uh, I was uh, I would come eleventh in the um, uh, in the first division national. Um, and that was in them days you were talking about a thousand odd anglers um uh, i was actually i think it was second in the section and you know um i just missed out on the major prizes there but hey it was a great match and um i can thank this particular float um uh, for that anyway um right no further ado let me ex i'll show you exactly what you'll need to make this float okay right here we go then now first of all you need a dowel balsa dowel. The float is uh, made of dowel, uh, that's the basic construction. With the dowel you will also need a brass rod. Now this brass rod will be inserted in the base of the dowel. The dowel will be shaped to, into a fine tip and on the tip we're going to put a cocktail stick, a cane cocktail stick. Now this float's quite uh, easy to make, um, just needs a little bit of patience and a little bit of elbow grease, just similar to the um, to any other type of balsa float. Um, again, I could use the use the lathe, but instead I'm going to use it. Um, I'm going to use um, sandpaper, and I'm going to gradually fine it down uh, by using about two or three different uh, courses of sandpaper. So with no further to do, let's carry on. Right, the first thing I've done, I've measured out six inches of dowel because I know that will give me about a 2BB. By the time I put the, the weighted brass rod into the bottom, it should give me a capacity of 2BB. That's a locking capacity of 2BB. So that means uh, I can use a couple of light dust shots down the line. Um, I've also marked out 7 inches, which will give me a 3 BB capacity. Okay, and what I've done, I've used a pen, a marker pen, to mark it out, to give me a guideline for when I cut the float. And, I'll, and because of this, uh, as a fine dowel, I will be using um, a Stanley knife to score it. And what I'll do is just twist it, keeping it a dead straight line. And as it gets through, it off it comes, and it's quite a nice, neat cut. Again, I'll do it at the seven inches ones. In fact, I've got two of these to make, so I shall do this twice. There's the, there's the first cut. There you go. And what I'll do to measure up, so I've got the same float, the same length of float. Yeah. Again, scoring the balsa and gradually cutting into it until it's off. Okay. Okay, now I've got my two lengths of bowl of dowel, balsa dowel. I shall just sand off the edges to give a nice flat edge to each side of the dowel. Yeah. 
The reason being, of course, is so that we can actually uh, insert our brass rod on one end and the tip of the float, which will be the cocktail stick as, as our antenna for the top of the float. Thank you. Yeah, so that's all about reasonable size there. So I'm making two, two times three BB, one times two BB. Now, again, because the dowel is quite small in circumference, um, I could use the special adapter for um, for making the centre, or I can visually um, judge it myself, which I think I'll I'll do that in this case. So what I'll do, I'll make a, a small pen, felt pen. So that's a rough in the middle there, as you can see. Same that size. So it gives me a guideline for when I make the indentation with a file. Okay, so that's that. So what I'll now do, I'll make a small insertion, keeping a steady hand, keeping it level. Okay, that's the one end and then the following end. Now on the one end I shall be making a, a larger indentation and on the top end I'll may be making a smaller one because obviously that's where the um, the bristle of the float is going to go. There you go. All right. What I'll do, I'll just put the bristle in first just to make sure it's even. Yeah. Okay, and the bottom end when I've started the indentation, I shall gradually start to make this slightly larger by using a file and twisting. I shall gradually start to make this hole slightly larger, doing it gently so as not to split at the balsa. There you go. Just giving it a little. Uh, so you can see, you just need a bit more. Now, I've got various sizes in the files. So what I'll do, I'll choose a slightly bigger file to make the hole slightly larger. And slightly bigger again, yeah, this one will do. Okay, so just by working away slowly, as I say, because all the floats are handmade, you you can um, you have to change little minor details sometimes on the float. Uh, for example, this one, um, I can see that I'll have to smooth off the edge with a bit of sandpaper just to give it a nice flat surface on the bottom. There you go. Just test the brass insert. Yeah, we're getting there slowly. So just by twisting slowly. I'm not going to force it because otherwise you split the dowel. Okay, but it is going in very nicely. So I shall keep working away at this now. Making this hole slightly larger by increasing the strength around the center of the hole to the outer side of the hole. And that way it starts, I don't know if you can actually see that, starting to form a nice hole there now, a nice um, slot so I can put the brass insert into. see the concentration on my face <laughs> there you go right let's just smooth this up a bit ok 
Okay, now my experience tells me that I'll need about an inch of brass rod. So what I'll be doing, I'll be cutting this brass rod, uh, finding it off to a little point um, to insert into the, the, the balsa dowel. Okay, I'm just about to cut the, uh, the brass rod. So I'm going to cut about an inch, which should be sufficient. Okay, there's my brass insert now. And of course, once this goes into the float, we'll glue it in with super glue. Um, and I'll show you the attachment later. It'll be a, a simple um, adapter that will attach itself to the end of the brass. Uh, so where we can put the eye, um, well, the, it'll, it's like a rubber eye, so we can put the line through. Okay. Okay, here is my little grinder, <laughs> my little grinder, um, and this is what I use to, to basically sharpen or grind down the brass insert. I'm trying to make it into a little point. Which my fingers, of course. Okay, so that's like a little point there now. I've made that into a point um, and I've made the hole in the bottom of the, the balsa, the dowel, and now place the brass rod into the dowel, slowly twisting it, carefully placing it and loading it there you are. And there's the top. Now, of course, what I have to do now is glue them in, and then I can proceed to shape it. Okay. Now I can either put a drop of the super glue on the brass and insert it, or sometimes it's better to actually put the drop of the glue down into the cavity and let that sort of drain into the hole, and then. Put the brass rod quickly before it sets. Yeah, and that's that's it set there. Okay. Um, I don't know if you can actually see. I've actually ground down that bit there as well on the top, so we can put the adapter on there. Okay. Now the same with the. The cocktail stick on the top. Okay, pick out a nice straight piece of peacock and um, nice straight piece of cocktail stick. Okay, there you are. So there you are. We're now sort of almost halfway through. There you go. So now it's, I've given it a couple of seconds, so now it's dried and it's quite firmly into the dowel. Now, I use, I'll use three sandpaper grades. One will be the rough, that's to, uh, to get the shape, to make the shape quickly. That's to smooth it off. And then the, that's the sort of a medium sort of grain. And then a finer, Grain, which is almost like paper to finish up to give it a smooth finish okay so similar to the uh, to any balsa float you have to start um, at, the, at, the, um, the, at the one end to gradually uh, sand it down to to a point so in this case because it's going to be on this the, um, the tip, we gradually start to um, twist the balsa in the sandpaper. We start off on the top and gradually work 
its way down so it creates almost like like elongated pear and with a finer bit on the top of the balsa yeah so as I said it's just a bit of matter of available grease to get the shape You know, keep an eye on it and do it evenly, otherwise uh, your float will start to look a bit lopsided sometimes. So make sure that you, you sand it down evenly from the, the top of the float down to the base. Now, as you can see, I'm leaving the base alone. I'm keeping that in its, uh, um, in its natural shape so you know I'm actually finding this down yeah so anyway I'll have a little chat about these floats because um it's gonna take a couple of minutes but these floats uh, I remember fishing um down on the Taunton Canal once and um, I actually was catching a load of skimmers it was a tea match um, on squat and um, this float was perfect for you know catch, catch, catching them on the far bank I ended up uh, third in the match I remember I had uh, 15 pound of skimmers on the squat Oh, another time I remember, thinking back now. Um, yeah, it was Dave Cost, it was, in the Angler's Mail uh, columnist. I remember talking to him once, and um, he was saying that uh, um, it works quite well on the Regent's Canal um, uh, squat. And it, what happens is they, uh, they catch the roach sort of mid depth, uh, running a little wackler through. So I tried this down on the Kelton Haven, and uh, I remember it worked and I actually caught um, a few pound of fish and I've done quite well in a section. Right, no, that's almost getting there now. You see the other you know, stand to thin out on the, the base. So I'm going to switch to the medium sized sandpaper now and try and get this out nice and even now. I think making these type of floats does come um, easy but it takes a bit of practice to get it right because I remember the first couple of floats I, I, I made I was making a bit of a botch of them like but now with a bit more experience I know you know obviously not to rub it down too fine because otherwise you you'll end up snapping the dowel. What I'm going to try and do now is try to sand it down almost parallel to the cocktail stick. So yeah, we're getting there slowly. I think I mentioned before if I uh, try to make money doing this <laughs> I don't think I'd make any money but I do it for the love of it and I can visualize this now working in the water a treat I can see myself catching loads of roach skimmers and getting to the far bank where a pole you'd have to be sort of uh, Mr Hercules to hold a like a 16 meter pole but at least with a rod and line and this sort of float you can get across the canal quite easy and because of the accuracy, as I said, because it's almost like a dart when you cast it, you can cast it right on a dustbin lid, etc. 
exactly where you want me to go. There you are. Right, I think that's almost finished. I'll just finish this off. Now, what I do on the bottom, because uh, it's a bit blunt, I'm just going to put a little shoulder on it, just to give it a little bit of aerodynamic. So what I'll do, I'll use the, the finer bit of sandpaper I got, just to take off the edge, twisting it as I'm doing it. I'll do it just once more with the medium sandpaper now. Just taking that edge off it, and there you go, the finished float. And that should be a 3BB. I will test it in some water though, just to make sure. Um, you, you know, you can tell the balance on the float because it's obviously got all this weight in the, in the bottom of it. And uh, if I try to balance it out, it'll be right on the bottom end of the float like that. Like that. Is that balance? <laughs> okay next stage uh, I've done three just as quick to do three as it is to do one so uh, this is as I said for an order so what I'm going to do now I'm going to dope it first um, and then I will seal the balsa and I'm going to leave it dry for an hour or so before I um, apply a second coat by then I'll probably uh, test them in case I need to shave off any of the brass inserts um, so I can get the the capacity right so um, these two are going to take uh, 3 BB and that's a 2 BB uh, float okay so let's crack on with that yeah just recently um, there's been uh, people, to, you know, on the, the social media and, um, you know, chatting away about certain things and uh, somebody mentioned about sponsorship, you know, what can you do to get sponsorship, you know, in, in fishing? Well, you know, I probably, I'm probably lucky in that respect because I've had sponsorship because obviously becoming a world champion and you know, writing articles and so on. Um, whether I got sponsored by the right people or not, I don't know. But anyway, for the average angler, to get sponsored, there's only really two ways, you know, to, to actually get sponsored. Um, you could join a team, of course, that are sponsored, and there's a few of them around these days. Uh, but sponsorship is not uh, full sponsorship. It's not where you get everything bought and paid for you know which um, i've had in the past um generally you can you can get um trade or, or discounted um tackle um and bait and so on um you know by by fishing under under a banner of a team but to get individual sponsorship is a different thing um in my experience what you would need to do is obviously um be very good at, at catching fish you know making sure that you 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 know you're you're in the papers on a regular basis um, and, you know, people start to recognise you and note, note you as a good angler. Um, there's the match fishing route, of course, where you can, uh, if you're successful, um, you know, you get good results, then, yeah, you know, that sort of sponsorship will come along automatically because, uh, you know, you'll be seeked out and, and asked if you'd be interested in sponsorship uh, but as I say it is very difficult these days well it's always has been difficult to get sponsorship I know that even being a world champion sometimes um, you know I've, I've been turned away at the door a couple of times in my, uh, myself so yeah it is very difficult um, I suppose at the end of the day it's all about dedication you know if you enjoy your sport Hey, why do you want to be sponsored? You know, sponsor yourself. That's what I do these days. You know, I produce my own floats, my own ground bait. You know, and I do coaching, days coaching. I can write articles, but uh, I'm just happy to do that on, on social media now. At least I'm not governed. I can write and talk about anything I want. I'm not uh, beholden to anyone. So, you know, when if a tackle... Um, 
comes under scrutiny, then I, you know, I'm the one to say, well, it's, it's either good or bad, and I, I've got no repercussions on it. So, um, yeah, very difficult, very difficult um, getting good sponsorship deals. But, you know, you can only keep trying, try and catch up record fish or win that big match. You never know. You never know. Right, I've just finished doping these now, so I'll leave these um, to stand for an hour or two and then come back and join me. Okay. I've, um, I've let them dry. I'm just going to um, smooth them out, smooth them down. So I, I've got a nice finish to them. Um, I'm using a very fine sandpaper. Well, it's almost like paper, really, but... <laughs> Um, it does give it a nice finish, so I'll just finish doing that. Yeah, that's good. Uh, the next stage, I shall be uh, painting the tips white uh, because we're going to um, eventually put a fluorescent uh, blaze on the top, uh, and you have to have a white background uh, for it to stand out. So uh, that's a little tip there for you people. Um, if, if you try to put uh, any blaze or fluorescent colour on top of a, any, any other colour, it just won't stand out. You need the white background for it to, to basically stand out a bit. So, should we do that in a minute? <clears throat> and then I'll be painting the, the floats black. Uh, once I've done that, uh, I shall test the, the capacity in a, in a, a glass uh, jar of water and if need be uh, to get it dead right I can shave off the brass um, base uh, inserts so I can get them dead right there you go that's that next stage now some white <clears throat> this is um, an acrylic white, uh, water-based, and it, it it finishes quite tough on the float. So let me just do that first. Um, it don't take long to dry this acrylic paint, so hopefully I'll crack onto the next stage as soon as it's dry. There you go. Come back. Okay, all right, they've dried a bit now, so we shall now be doing the base. Um, as I say, I use the uh, this paint, ground light, creates a lovely finish to the float, nice hard surface, and it's like a matte colour, so um, it's quite good. And once I've done this, uh, I shall let this dry for a few hours. Uh, possibly put another coat on, but we'll see. There you go. It's starting to look like a float. <laughs> okay. Um, I've let them dry now for an hour. Put a second coat on, and I've just rubbed them down. So, I'm going to just paint the tips. Um, 
I squirted a little bit of the fluorescent blaze orange into the top, into the can top. And now I'm using a cotton wool bud. Just let it dry for a second, then it evaporates. And when it's at the right consistency, start to paint the tip. There you go, voila. Now I will uh, touch the um, edge off with a little black felt pen to make it nice and neat. So there's a straight line around there, but uh, apart from that, we're getting there. Okay, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, they're drying, still drying, but what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, uh, Put the capacity on there now ready uh, this is the 2 bb okay what i do i rest it on my knee so it's easier to write Okay, B, B, B. Okay, the next stage, once it's dry, I'll be varnishing it. Then we shall be testing the floats and I'll show you how to put the adapter on, on this type of uh, float. Okay, well, here we are um, at the shot in stage, uh, just testing the floats. Right, basically, I've painted it. Let's recap on this now. Um, cocktail stick into the dowel, fine tuned it by sanding it down to a point. Brass insert into the bottom, marking a float with the pens for the capacity. This was a 3BP. Um, varnishing it to seal it. Obviously, doping it, painting it, then varnishing it. And there's the finished float. Now, I'm just going to quickly show you uh, the shot in uh, capacity. Now, what we do, how we attach the float on the line is with um, a rubber adapter. Now, this one is holding three um, BBs. So, basically, if you put the float in without... Uh, into the water without the BB, it will stand quite proud. Once you put the shot on it, it then sinks to the. Yeah, let me show you that better. By going like that, there you go. So that's the that's that's the shotting capacity, and that's all ready to go. Okay, well, I hope uh, you've learned a little bit about the, the Dart Waggler, a fantastic little tool to have in your box. You're not always going to use it, but sometimes there's going to be stages and times when, yes, it'll, uh, it's about the best float you'll, you'll have in your box. And they're easy to make. Of course, if you don't want to make one, you can buy one off me. <laughs> anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed it. See you on the next one. Um, don't forget to subscribe and share.